In this video, we are going to learn about the data structure called linked lists. When we want to store a data element in a linked list, we store that data in a structure called a node. So a node is a block of memory. Let us say this has a memory address of 100. Now this block of memory is going to have two parts. The first part of the node is going to store the data and the second part of the node is going to store an address. So in this, the data part of the node will store that data element which we want to add to the list and the address is going to store the memory address of the next node in the list. So let me explain this with an example. Suppose we have a list of 1, 2, 3. So the data elements which we want to store in the list is 1, 2, 3 and in that order. Now each of these data elements is going to have its own node. Each node is a block of memory, so each of these is going to have a memory address. It's important to note that these memory addresses are not sequential. That is, nodes are going to be stored in any memory which is going to be free at the point of time of creation of the node. So the data elements we have are 1, 2 and 3. Now when we want to have a list which, which stores these elements, when we are at a particular node, we are going to store the address of its successive node in the address block. So 2 comes after 1, so we are going to have the address 50 in its address block. 3 comes after 2, so in the address block of the node which stores 2, we are going to store the address of 3. So when we come to the first node, we are going to have the data and we have the address of the next node. Using this information of the address, we can go to the next node. Now we are at node number 2. So the data element is 2 and we can see that the address of the next node is 175. Using this information, we can go to the next node. Finally, we reach the last node with element number 3. When we reach the last node and there is no other node which is its successor, the ad what we will fill in the address block is going to be null. So as you can see, from the very first node, using the data which we attain from the address block, we can be redirected to the next node. At node number 2, using the data which we obtain from the address block, we can go to node number 3 and so on. So by now, I hope you have understood why we have a data block and an address block in the structure we call node. It is easy to see here that if we want to attain all the elements of a list, we don't need to keep track of every element of a list. In fact, if we keep track of just the first element, which we are going to call start, 
we can be redirected to the second, redirected to the third. So in other words, having only the information of the first node, we can attain the information of all the other nodes that are present in the linked list. So this means if we want to know all the elements of a list, it is enough to know just the first element of the list. That is, it is enough to know the starting node to be able to attain all the other nodes in that particular list. The main advantage that a linked list has over another structure which stores elements like say an array is that a linked list is dynamic in size. This means that the size is not predefined. So if we want to add another element to this list, all we have to do is create a node and assign the address of the third node, this which is now pointing to null, just store the address of the new node in this block. In that way we can go on adding elements to a linked list. If we have an array, then we will be storing elements to a predefined location. This means that when I create an array, I will be telling the memory that I am going to need five spaces. Now we cannot go over this five spaces and the size needs to be given at the very beginning when we create the array. But for a linked list, we can go on adding nodes to the end of the linked list. This is because when we talk about an array, let's say this is our memory space. And now I'm going to say I want an array of three blocks of memory. Now each element of the array is going to be stored in contiguous locations. And when I create the array, I'm going to tell the memory, I'm going to need three and only three spaces from you. So now suppose I fill in my data. Now let's say there arises a need for me to store a fourth element. I cannot store the fourth element in the contiguous location because I have not already requested for that location. This location could possibly be filled up. Similarly, I can't add any elements to the beginning of the array either because this could have been filled up as well. But in a linked list, each node is stored in a different area of the memory. So let's say I have this list and I want to add the data element 4 to it. So, in this case, I am going to create a node with data element 4. Now, when I am creating the node which is going to store the data element 4, I am not going to search for a contiguous location. I can search for any free location in the memory and that will always be available. So now, I am going to store 4 in some random memory space, let's say 312. And then the address of this fourth node, I'm going to store in the address block of the third node. So this will no longer point to null. Instead, it's going to point, store 312. And therefore, from the information we can get from the third node, we can arrive at the location of the fourth node. Now, there is no fifth node as of now. So the fourth node will not store any address. This is why linked lists is a good data structure when we are trying to store a collection of a dynamic amount of data. When we don't really know the how much data is going to be coming in and we want to keep the size of our collection fluid. So we have looked at one type of linked list in which a, the structure of a node has the data and the address to the next node. So as you can see, the way we can traverse this list is only in one direction. A variation of the linked list, which is called the doubly linked list, is 
is going to be slightly different. The only variation comes in the structure of the node. So this node, which is again just a memory address, let's say this memory address is going to be 200. One block of this node is going to store the data and the other two are going to store addresses. One of the blocks will store the address of the successive node and one of the blocks will store the address of the previous node. How this linked list works is exactly the same as your singly linked list or the linked list which only keeps the address of the next node. Let me repeat that. That is called a singly linked list. Now when we have the address of the previous, all we are going to do is we are going to also store as we are storing the address of the next node, we will also store the address of the previous node. So this is helpful when you want to um, traverse the linked list in reverse or many operations like that. Having a previous address is going to prove helpful. So let me explain that with a quick example. I'm going to use the same example as this one. So I'm going to have let's say three nodes. These are the data elements. I'm going to give them the same memory addresses. So this is going to be at 100. This is going to be at 50. This is going to be at 175. The blocks which store the next node's address is going to be the same because it's going to be in the same order. So when we come to the node 1, we need to go to the next node which is stored at 50. When we are at this node, we need to go to the next node stored at 175. And finally, there is no other node, so I'm going to give it null. Now the same way, when we are at node 1, we don't have any previous node, so this is going to store null. When we are at this node, the previous node's address is 100, so we will store 100. At this node, the previous node's address is 50, so we will store 50. So we are going to keep track of the start node. It's also useful to keep track of the ending node. So from the start node, we can go to the next node since we have 50. From this node, we can come to the third node and then we can go to the end. Now suppose we start from the end. I have the node 3. Now I have 50. So I can go back to this node. So from here I can go back like this. From this node I can go back to 100. So this is just a simple variation of a linked list in which we both store the address of the next node and the previous node. With this, I hope you have got a basic idea on how a linked list works.